how big of an impact was it to have Khalid Duke and Jerron McPherson back out there for you for a full game? Uh, yeah, um, it was great having two back out there. You know, Khalid, he's a force off that edge. With him gaining those 20, 30 pounds that he did over the summer, the course of the quarantine that we had, it allowed him to be a lot more stronger, a lot more stout, and he kept his speed as well, too. So that's the biggest thing. And then on the back end with Jerron, you know, he he made some great plays, had the big hit, the fumble, um, forced the fumble, and then caught the pick that sealed the game, you know what I'm saying, that ended the game. So, you know, Jerron and Khalid, they, they made some great plays throughout the game, which, you know, ultimately, contrib ultimately contributed to our win, too. So it's great having those two guys back. I also wanted to ask you about the turn turnover differential in that game. You mm -hmm. came up with one of them early mm -hmm. with an interception. Yeah. Just how did you guys go about, I guess, confusing Oklahoma into turning it over that many times? Uh, you know, just went into it trying to give them different looks from what we uh, previously did, either even last year um, when we played them. And, um, you know, just giving those different looks. And, you know, Rattler, he's a good quarterback. We're just with him being kind of a younger guy. It's just giving him those different looks kind of – I feel like rattled him throughout the game a little bit, so it's helped us come up with those picks. And even on mine, shout out to uh, Jay Pick. He's the one that kind of got his hand on the ball and got it tipped up in the air too. So hats off to him as well. John? Yeah, Elijah, was there a, a point in the game, you talk about feeling like you got him rattled a little bit. Was there a point where you kind of clicked, you thought, hey, we, we have this guy on the ropes? Uh, yeah, I just thought, you know, from the start of the game, we kind of, we started out well, even though we did have some mistakes here and there. But, um, you know, the D-line was getting after him, um, making him move around in the pocket a little bit, making him go scramble or whatnot. So, you know, just having him move out of the pocket to where he wasn't just so comfortable sitting back there just, you know what I'm saying, going through his different reads and progressions. I felt like that was a start for him, and we did well on that. And, um, you know, we just came up with a couple of picks, a couple of deflections too. So just getting him off his spot and not being able to sit, uh, let him sit back there and be comfortable. So, What was the week of practice like leading up to that with so many different bodies in the secondary? Like, Does that, does that affect you and Justin much at linebacker? Um, you know, it just gives you a different guy to communicate to. And, you know, that's what we kind of just been working on throughout the whole time we've gotten back. Um, just being able to communicate, you know what I'm saying, as a defense as a whole, no matter who's back there. But yeah, we have had a guy, a lot of guys kind of move around. As you know, Jerron was back there strong safety this week. But um the biggest thing is just communication, no matter who's out there, you know. Um, you always gotta be communicating, um, just looking through different reads and different formation sets that we get and different play calls that we have, you know. Like I said, just communication is the biggest part. But um, it wasn't that hard, you know, for me and Justin. Um, Justin is a smart guy. Um, he can read things pretty quickly, and then we could talk about them throughout the play or on the sideline. And just knowing the next time that it comes up, just being able to call out different checks and things with the safeties and the nickels and whatnot as the play goes on. So. Thanks, Elijah. Mm -hmm. Scott Fritchin. Yeah, hey, Elijah. How you doing, man? Good. How about yourself? Good, good. Hey, um, Alan Bowman, the um, Texas Tech quarterback, is fifth in the country in interceptions, but he's also fifth in the country in passing yards. And I'm just curious how eager you guys are for this matchup against their offense, knowing that interceptions are already in this defense's DNA. Yeah. Um, you know, with them playing with 70, 80 snaps a game, you know, you're going to have some things like that. But as a defense for us, um, it'll, it'll always be great to, you know what I'm saying, get some picks from him and try and uh, ride on them up as well like we did last uh, week with Rattler. But, um, you know, it's always great to get picks, man. It's just knowing he has five already, it kind of lets us see what, you know, what uh, progressions he had or where he messed up on or no, so we can capitalize on that and in any other plays that we kind of see that'll help us out in the different coverages uh, that we have as well, too. But, yeah, we should uh, we should get out there with those five picks he has. I wanted to ask you, too, um, it's that time of year where seniors mm -hmm. kind of uh, hit some milestones, and Skyler is on – the verge of having 5,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards in his career, and he'd be only the second K-State quarterback to achieve that feat. Um, how have you seen him grow uh, as a player in the last year, and um, what impresses you most about him as a quarterback? Yeah. Um, just in terms of him growing over the last year, you know, Coach Climbing is kind of 
challenged us all to be better leaders, more vocal leaders, just, you know what I'm saying, stepping up and being those voice for the younger guys on the team who, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it just takes a little more help to kind of come along and get to the spot to, to you know what I'm saying, as you are as a senior. But, you know, just the leadership he, he has taken on the team and taking those certain guys up on his wing and being able to, you know, stay even kill, even in different situations when we're up or whenever we're down like we had last week. So I just feel like he did a great job last week, you know, getting everybody to come back together and help us come back on the win on the offensive side of the ball. And just, you know what I'm saying, staying in the fight. And that's the biggest thing, you know. If the leaders rattle, then, you know, it, it'll make everything just that much harder. But with Skyler, he keeps everything even kill, like I said, and, and never phases. So, and that's just the biggest thing, you know, having a leader that, that never just gets too emotional. Like I said, gets too high, gets too low. Skyler's always even kill. So that's the biggest thing I've seen throughout the, over the last year and just from this past game that we played in. Thank you, man. Good luck this weekend. Appreciate it. Thank you, too. We only have time for a couple more. We'll start here with Sully. Hey, like kind of following up on what Scott asked there about Skyler, you know, it seems like in the biggest games, he kind of takes his game to the next level. Um, yeah. Over your kind of run here at K-State with him, was there a moment maybe that you kind of saw that he had that capability? And then when it translated in the game, was it not really a surprise to you? Uh, yeah, it would have to be the Iowa State game um, when him and Zuber connected. I know that was a big game for us, and it went all the way down to the wire. But, uh, yeah, that game, he kind of showed me something that game. And from that point on, he's just been doing his thing. And he's a gamer, you know, just like you said. In big games, he rises to occasion and, you know what I'm saying, comes out and helps us, you know what I'm saying, get wins. But for me, it would have been that Iowa State game, just <laughs> that last play, how he's able to move around, just get everybody in different scramble techniques and whatnot. And, get the ball to Zuber in the end zone at one place. So thanks, man. No problem. Uh, let's do the last one here, Derek. Elijah, uh, how much does it boost the defense's morale when you kind of can rally around a guy like Echo Boydo that steps up the way he did when his number was called? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, that's, that's all the Echo, man. I'm glad he made that play. He uh, <laughs> broke on the ball, got a good stop. But, you know, that just shows the, the mentality of our defense. You know, it doesn't matter who comes in. Everybody has to do their job and, you know what I'm saying, play up the part. So with Echo being able to step in and do his job and do it well, that, that like I said, that shows, you know what I'm saying, the defensive mentality that we got. Next player up, you got to do your job. Just go out there and have fun. Do the best you can. So Clearly, you guys made a big jump from your performance against Arkansas State to your performance against Oklahoma, and that was shown by the result. But did you – Feel that about your individual game itself? Uh, yeah, there was a couple of things. I'm not going to lie on my end that I need to get better with, um, just looking at the film and whatnot. But overall, I feel like overall I, I did pretty well. But like I said, there's, there's always room for improvement, you know, whether it's Arkansas State or Oklahoma or even any other team that we play. There's always room for improvement. So.